Welcome everyone and thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Scott McKenzie and I'm one of the marketing executives at Mercurius IT. And today we'll be sharing how you can streamline your warehouse processes so you can save time. Our partner Boltrix has created a software solution which covers warehouse management, transport management and freight management. Now these are all critical areas for any logistics service provider. So today in this webinar, we'll be focusing on warehouse management. In future webinars, we can focus on the other sections in more detail. We will address the challenges that logistics service providers are facing now, but also in the coming period. This includes shorter delivery times, increasing demands regarding product safety, and a persistent shortage of labor. In addition, you must continue to meet the requirements and wishes of customers. All in all, this can put a lot of pressure on your organization. This is why we'll show you a number of functionalities during the demo, which enable you to meet expectations without having to burden your colleagues with extra work. You can automate certain processes, keep customers informed and track goods throughout the entire process. With us today is Jan Cornell van der Chris, the Managing Director at Boltrix. He's an expert in logistics and ICT solutions, and he's got more than a decade of experience in this sector. So I'll hand you over to him just now, and he'll share his insights on the current issues within the logistics landscape. As uh, Scott just shortly introduced, I am Jan Cornell van der Chris uh, and co-owner of Boltrix. I'm a logistic consultant from background. I've done a lot of implementations within the logistics industry and together with two colleagues started Boltrix in 2010. This with the idea to develop a flexible and total solution for logistics service providers, which is future proof, meaning always a debate, can be implemented in a short time, three months actually, and for a fixed price. Together with our partners in foreign countries, we have done more than 200 projects till now. Within Boltrix, I'm responsible for all commercial activities and especially the international rollout of our solutions. And in that role, I'm working closely together with Mercurius as our partner for the UK. So, as Scott mentioned earlier, today we want to talk about the challenges in the logistics industry. And I think one of the most important challenges is change. Change itself is nothing new. Growing competition, a higher demand for information from your customers, new technologies, change is, whether we like it or not, a continuous process. Most of these changes we have seen coming from afar. Even disruptive, disruptive developments by players as Amazon, Uber, Tesla, which can flip the entire market at once with the help of new technologies and concepts, can already be foreseen long before they happen. Yet, no one could have foreseen the forced change because of the corona crisis. No slow or predictable innovations, but instant and extensive developments in which you as a logistics service provider must find your way, whether you like it or not. In short, as a logistics service provider, the most important thing is that you are agile, that you can move with the market and thus are in the driver's seat, which gives you an advantage over your competitors. That's what we will cover during this webinar. Now let's dive into what is currently going on within logistics. Simply put, logistics is getting the right things at the right time, at the right location, at minimal cost. That sounds simple, but in practice, it turns out to be a lot more complex. Because if we only translate the right things to today's challenges, you will be dealing with value-added logistics, quality controls, and order picking strategies, among many other things. Very topical and is, for example, the enormous growth in online purchases due to COVID-19. An increasing number of webshop orders equals more fulfillment at logistics service providers. 
As a logis logistic service provider, you must be able to respond to that change. At the same time, the dimension, the right time, has also taken extreme firms in a short time. Consider the introduction of next day and same day delivery, but also last mile solutions and scheduled de delivery. If you then think, link these two to at minimal costs, the complexity becomes clear. The eternal struggle between cost minimization and optimum service. As a matter of fact, this struggle itself is very contradictory, a paradoxical struggle. Because with the common used value strategies of Tracy and Weersma in mind, you need to focus on one strategy. And where low costs lie in the focus of operational excellence, service optimization matches customer intimacy. So you just you must distinguish yourself in a specific area because being the best in everything is simply impossible. For this reason, Apple is not the cheapest, and Best Buy is in general not known for its service level. So ask yourself two questions. How do I keep my cost low and my customer satisfied? The answer is quite simple. Put your WMS to work and save yourself some time. With the right tools, you can process larger volumes with minimal manual operation. So you do not have to burden your colleagues with additional administrative tasks. That makes a difference. You no longer have to worry about it, so you can focus on other things. For example, you can meet the demands of your customers. Consider the communication desire and the traceability of products, or what the optimum, optimum distribution of assignments is between people and machines. In which area are the quick wins? We are talking about five topics. Follow the route of goods from start to finish without your colleagues in the warehouse having to manually record all control points one by one in the system. Within a few mi minutes, Shadas and Darshan will show how you can largely automate this and effortlessly share the information with your customers. Avoid traffic jams to your docks. For example, by allowing your logistic partners to reserve a time slot in advance. If you have enough time, we would love to demonstrate how you can achieve that. Optimize the movement in your warehouse by measuring the performance of resources, looking at the most optimal place to store certain goods, but also the route that your warehouse employees follow to collect orders. When you have a large amount of data, it's very important to know how to utilize it and to use this inform information intelligently and make and support your decisions based on this data. Lineage Logistics, one of our longtime customers, for example, uses big data and thanks to artificial intelligence, have been able to run complex analysis. It enables them to run some optimization programs. Within the current warehouses they have, which gave, which gave them the insight that they could use to trace 20,000 extra available power places without the necessity of adding extra square meters to their warehouses. It was simply already available. And thanks to these insights obtained, they can allocate the available space. Just a great example of a business analytics can offer for your business. Focus on automation and robotization. On the one hand, to make smart use of the availability of your resources and to offer an answer to the tight labor market. On the other hand, to cope with global competition. At the same time, there is a growing need to be able to take orders in smaller quantities, preferable with a shorter lead time and in a specific time window. Think about the boost in e-fulfillment due to COVID-19. By automating processes even more, you can increase the speed of the settlement process without compromising on income. During the demonstration, Shailas and Darshan will dive into the possibilities of workflows and steps to demonstrate 
how easily you can automate certain activities. Another topic we cannot highlight enough is security, ransomware, DDoS attacks, data leaks. Unfortunately, we live in a time where we increasingly encounter cybercrime. Therefore, also with cybersecurity. Due to a leak in Microsoft Exchange some time ago, for example, we meet, we see the number of hacks attempts increase substantially. How do you deal with that? Do it on yourself? Do you have the knowledge to do that? When you choose, for example, for a cloud solution, this is arranged for you. Finally, think, think along proactively with customers. It does not have to be a mind wrapper at all, because with the data you already have collected, it often turns out to be quite easy to gain valuable insights. This way, you know exactly how many goods are in stock, what the average lead time is, and what the trend is in terms of demand. Data that allows your customers to reduce inventory without having to sell no to their customers. How this exactly works in the software itself? Let's dive into the software itself. For this, I will give the floor to Shailas and Darcy. Thank you, Jan Cornell, for briefly introducing us and taking it ahead. So I'll just share my screen and I'll walk you through the product itself. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shailesh Shapte, Senior Consultant Mercurius IT, and along with me, my colleague Darshan Mungekar. And today I'll cover the demonstration of WMS solution of Boltrix 3PL Dynamics built on Business Central. For sake of demonstration, I'll be focusing on topics which are most relevant in most of the situations and which includes receiving, RF scanning, workflows, customer portal, app platforms, and Power BI tools. We can see here currently I have login as warehouse order employee from customer service center's point of view. And it gives me look and feel for performing my lots of day to day jobs. For example, I can see here that on top of it, I have lots of master data relevant to my role. Documents which are relevant to my particular warehouse order processing role and then lots of details around posted documents reports and analysis lists. Now, as Jan Cornell mentioned earlier, in warehousing business, one need to absolutely sure that goods are delivered at right time, at right location, and at minimal cost. To ensure or to help that, I have few cubes available here. For example, I can see here 85 orders that are available to me and for which customer is still waiting a feedback on it. I can click on that cube and can see all the associated inbound orders. These cubes can be further configured to see uh, to see some some highlighting with red and green colors so that I can easily trace my backlog and can plan better warehouse resources to cover up that backlog. Of course, as I mentioned, this particular dashboard is more suitable to my role as a warehouse order processor. And then you can have many other dashboards like the finance person or transport management person, and we can change the role center and the look and feel and the dashboard views which are suitable to that role will be demonstrated here. For now, let's deep dive into this particular load. And I will start with the primary master, which is the location, the most important in warehousing. Now, if I click location, I'll see here the list of specific location within my specific building. And that locations can be for lots of purposes. It can be for receiving goods, 
or performing the shipments, performing the warehouse movement and lots of other warehousing activities. Similarly, I have few other important masters and if I click on customers, I'll see here the list of customers. Customers have customer master have lots of column in this page. Their number, name, contact details, their outstanding balances. Now you can share this customer master data in quite an easy way using the standard business central features like open in Excel. And as soon as click on open in Excel, you see a Excel file will get open, which will which which I can share with my uh, with my uh, management for having a better MIS and can use a drill downing around that on any customer card. If I if I search any customer card, you can see lots of information associated to that customer by simply simply clicking on this statistics window. Now you see I have selected a customer, let's say sneaker shop and lots of statistics for that customers are available like what are the ongoing sales invoices, what are the ongoing orders, so and so forth and lot more information around outstanding orders and turnover details. Now if I want to further see in details of specific customer, I can click on the specific customer customer master and it will open another customer card. On this customer card, you have the details around name, balances, the address and contact details and all this stuff. And in addition to that, we have a couple of more added tabs which are relevant for our warehousing and transportation business. Now you can see here this, this, this is the information which is relevant for transportation business for that particular customer and this is the information around the warehousing tab. Of course, if we use the solution of warehouse management with transportation management solution as a built-in solution we have together it will add a more advantage in your logistics business. In warehouse you have fields like invoice period code which will give clarity that I want to invoice my different storage costs whether on weekly basis whether on monthly basis or again specific orders. I can build lots of intelligence around mentioning here whether I want external carrier number to be mandatory when I will receive particular customer items so and so forth. I can even define here what are the batch numbers or label numbers that I can use by simply clicking show more and defining the batch number there so that can be used for that customer items. For this specific customer we can also have attributes which details around other important information for the customer. Now for customer the next important master will be the items uh, customer items. What are the items which are related to that specific customer and I can simply go to those list by clicking on couple of buttons and I can see here the list of customer items. Now on customer item you have the external number which is nothing but the which will store the references which is received from customer while this internal number which is again being captured as a separate number which will help to build my tagging around the batches and categorizing those customer for performing better warehouse intelligence on it. Again I can click on any customer item and I can see some more details for that item. For example, I want to see what is the inventory of that particular item. I can click that and I can see the inventory position of that customer item within various buildings and in specific location. You can also define some more details by simply clicking on on this extra button and you can define few more few more uh, fields like if I want to define some warehouse strategy for this particular customer item whether this item is slow moving fast moving or you know what's of uh, what should be the size of the particular customer item I can define that on this warehousing strategy. I can also add some conditions for the particular customer item. Lots of things can add intelligence for doing your better warehousing operation. For any specific customer item, if I want to see details, I can simply click on this navigate function and it will show me 
all the details for that customer items. Like what are, what are the receipts, number of receipts that has been posted for the item, number of shipments that has been posted, number of batches in which that customer item is being covered, so and so forth. Quite interesting. Now, if I go back to my landing page, as we have seen customer and item as a two important customer item, as a two important masters within logistic business, third important point for service provider is to have right pricing for various warehousing activities. And for that, we have master called WMS contract. So if I click on WMS contract, it will show me lots of price agreements which are related not only for the customers, but even for my suppliers or vendors. Vendor price contract are very important for all outsourcing activities, particularly in transportation management or FMS business. If I have some shipping agents as my service providers, I can create a contract on them and that can become my purchase pricing for creation of purchase invoices. For now, let's see one of the contract from sales side or warehousing operations slide. And for that, I have a contract for my customer, which I shown earlier called sneaker shop. Let me open that contract. Now on the contract card, you can see some more details. For example, what is the validity period of that contract? What is the valid valid from valid to for which this contract is effective and you have lots of you can define uh, various activities for receiving shipping transport. What should be your pricing? For example, let's say the activity is receipt. Now here you have detailed lines and there you can define different services for which I, I would like or I'm interested in billing to the customer. For example, for receiving, I have a service like uh, inbound cost storage charges and cost of receiving for which I would interested to bill it to the customer. Now for each of this service, you can define the service as a fixed cost or depending on per pallet charge or per box charge so and so forth. So lots of options to configure these prices. If I want to see further, if I want to set the prices by different slabs, I can use this function called graduated pricing wherein I can set the slabs depending on the quantity per per consignment, I can have a fixed price as a benchmark price plus price for each pallet thereafter. I can set that quite configurable way. So now we have seen the master data. So far so good. Let's see the transactions part of it. Let's go to the role center again and let's start creating a new action or new order inbound order. For that, I will click on this plus receipts as a button and it will start. It will open a window for entering or processing a new order. Now it's possible that I can even use our EDI functionality and data connectors so that lots of information can be integrated and I can create this receipts or receipt orders in more automated way or I can use even semi automatic feature which we have added called Excel import. So that will save. Lots of time around the manual entry, but for the purpose of demo, I am doing or I'm processing this order manually. Let me select the customer. Let's say sneaker shop. And as soon as I selected the customer, you see lots of information get pre filled. Now I can of course select or change the building code at which I'm going to receive this order and you see the status of this order at the moment as new. Let's go to the line and let's insert some item which I'm planning to receive in this consignment. Again, I'm selecting this particular item and lots of information around that item like unit of measure or carrier type gets pre filled. Let's enter carrier quantity as a three. Now in each case of this carrier, you have 150 boxes. So the total quantity become 450, which is got automatically updated. You see here in my receipt, there is one field called status. 
and which is currently as new. Now what I'll do, I'll change the status from new to the confirm. So as soon as is the status is confirmed, there are lots of automated activities which get performed. This status are driven behind the scene with our own configurable templates called status template or nothing but the workflows. With status template, all steps you perform on your day to day basis, you can automate them with defining and tagging them for specific order types. For example, as soon as I confirm the status as confirm in my customer service team, I would like to inform customer via email saying that I have received this order and I would like to trigger that email. You can do that simply by attaching few of our functions and system will automatically trigger email to the customer as soon as I change the status or customer service person has changed the status to confirm from new. Even in this case, if you seen as soon as I change the status from new to confirm at background system has inserted few detailed lines for that particular consignment. Now as we seen there are three pallets which I received each pallet consists of 150 boxes. So system has automatically inserted three lines for me by assigning the associated pallet number or carrier number for it. Quite interesting. Huh? Now uh, we have this particular status and we have created this receipt lines and for in uh, we have sent a mail to our customer confirming that the order is been received. In the matter of time, truckload will arrive at my dock to unload this particular consignment. Obviously, warehouse, warehouse employee needs to run some entry check and register those goods. Traditionally, this can be done using simple paper printout and pen and paper. However, if you have your old telnet like devices, you can even use them by barcode scanning and we have further added a functionality called scan view. Wherein using the same telnet devices what you have currently, you can configure a scan view and use them as a RF scanners. It is also possible to use more modern layouts like app platforms wherein on app you can have this same scan view in a graphical interface way. Finally, we also have voice speaking and receiving like functions quite automated. As Jan Cornell mentioned earlier, we have further extended in one of our Netherlands customer wherein we are, we are receiving those consignments by following a picking by vision concept. So system captures that by vision and it picks it in the warehousing. All above solution is completely configurable and your users are self dependent once they get trained. Well, for now for this demonstration, let's finish the receiving of this order via RF scanner. Let me log into a RF scanner as a warehouse employee. Now here you see this is the scanner view again as I mentioned earlier this scanner screens can be changed by business according to process correspond to their own workflow without dependent on any programmer or without dependent on consultant like us as soon as they get trained. Again for updating these transactions of receipts with business central we have working with the interesting concept of web services that means as soon as you post any receipts in warehouse or where your warehouse employee process some transaction in warehouse, the data at background will automatically synchronize and will be available in business central. Seamless availability of the details to the customer service person as soon as the receiving is performed in warehouse. For now in this RF scanner, let me receive this particular order which we have created just now one one at as in. So I'll just start receiving this. And then I'll select a receipt with pre notification. Again, all these options may not be relevant. If it is not relevant to your business, you can configure them or remove them. I hope you can see my uh, emulator. I'll, I'll once again. I hope you can see emulator on your screen. Uh, 
Please share your uh, desktop, Sharish. Uh, we can just see the uh, business center screen. Sorry. Please share your complete desktop. I, so I just you... shared once again. Sorry, Darshan. Yeah. So is it visible now? Yeah, now it's good. Thank you. Thanks, Darshan. Now, uh, let's see. I'll start receiving the. So I'll start from beginning. So this is the this is the layout which uh, warehouse employee will see as soon as he open his scanner, his RF scanner. I'll start receiving uh, in warehouse using this RF scanner as a warehouse employee. I'll select receipt and I'll select receipt with pre notification option and I want to post or process receipt for this particular receipt document. So I'll select the receipt document and currently I'm just selecting uh, by clicking uh, or mouse clicks or keyboard clicks. But assume you are in warehouse and you would like you can you can simply scan your particular pallet and system will automatically capture what is the associated item in it. So I am currently scanning this particular pallet and I have scanned it there. Assume uh, for now it's I'm been scanning and then I'll click as enter. For example, in this pallet there is there are 150 units or 150 boxes which I generally expected to receive. However, if we received only 120 quantity, let's say in particular ballot, you can simply modify that and accept that. So as soon as I post this as a warehouse employee in warehouse from Telnet scanner, seamlessly the data gets updated into the business central. Now I'm just refreshing this particular order. As soon as I open this particular order as a customer service person within warehouse, I'll see the status of this order get changed to check. That means my warehouse employee has started to receive the inventory in warehouse. And you, you if you remember in earlier step from RF scanner, I posted one pallet for 120 units, which also gets updated automatically here. So quite interesting. Again, you can also capture lots of detail using those RF scanners. For example, clock in time and clock out time of particular warehouse employee for performing this receiving task. This particular time will get again can be timestamped to the invoice and if I have specific rate defined for performing that warehouse activity, I can invoice that warehouse employee time as well to the customer. For now, I am processing this receipt within uh, within business central itself. So I'll just open some detailed lines. Of course, warehouse employee, as I shown you earlier, can receive these lines from uh, from RF scanner in warehouse. As soon as I posted receipt, you see, and if I if I refresh the status, the status will get changed from check to the services. That means particularly for performing this particular activity, the service lines are get inserted based on the price agreement defined at background. I can even process a financial transaction or I can create an invoice for this specific order by going to the posting tab and clicking a post button. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, if for this particular customer your invoicing frequency is weekly or monthly, then I'll accumulate lots of receipts or lots of shipment and create a consolidated order for that. Good. So far so good. So this is the receiving process. Let's go back to the dashboard. In warehousing, it's not just receiving, but there are lots of other activities involved like picking, put away, cycle counting. System can create all these activities based on adding some intelligence there using your own workflows on customer items and driven further by specific orders. You can even link warehouse activity groups for that and can assign those activities to specific warehouse employee. Again, you can perform lots of activities around cycle counting and others. So I'll, I'll just go like Google like search button there and I'll type a cycle counting and you see there are lots of thresholds or parameters available with me for con configuring the cycle counting process. Let's say if my stock of particular item comes down to zero, I would like to run the cycle counting or if it comes to let's say 20 unit, 
I would like to run the cycle counting. So lots of these parameters can be configured and more workflows can be set there. So far, so good. Now, let's say you have created these receipts and uh, you have currently processed these receipts, but lots of time what will happen is at one dock, there are lots of trucks can arrive at the same time for performing this loading and unloading. And in that case, it will create traffic jam like situation. How you could prevent that situation for that? Again, we have developed a fantastic feature called traffic planning. So if I if I go there and if I see time slot planning, if I open that, you can see here I have lots of time slots for every hourly time slots I have been configured and there on vertical way there are various docks. Now you can assign this particular time to particular shipping agent for performing the particular activity and that shipping agent can be of customer. Again, in this time slot, you can you can color those different type of orders. For example, inbound orders you can highlight in let's say green color and outbound orders, let's say in red color so and so forth. This time slot booking not only your warehouse person can do or customer service person can do, but you can offer that booking to customers as well. And for that we have developed quite interesting app platform. We'll see that in a while again, not only this time slot you can offer to the particular customer, but you can put some capacity restrictions on that time slot. For example, if I go to the time slot capacity restriction, you can see here that I have a, I have given a time slot to Baker Logistics between 1 to 5 p.m. on specific day, but not only this time slot, I would like to tell Baker Logistics that within this time slot, he can just deliver 150 items or 150 orders. I can build those rules there. I can say for this Baker Logistics, though he has a time slot for Monday, on Monday he should perform only export related processes. Again, lots of possible flexible capabilities you have. Now for external transportation company or even for customers, it's quite sometimes it's important that they get their data or they get their information on real time basis. For that we have developed interesting customer portal. Now customer can access with their login ID and password on this particular portal and they can see all the information which is relevant to their particular account. For example, invoices, credit memos and as soon as I click on any of this particular function, you see you will find all the details for that particular customer. You have the details around logistics. For example, if I go to the warehousing tab and if I click the re receipt lines, you will see here lots of receipt lines which uh, uh, which currently are in process or are in created can be visible. Even the statuses are visible. So even they may not need to contact customer service of your business and they can themselves get the data on real time basis. 7 accessible solution. Quite interesting. They can also see the inventory of various items by simply simply clicking there by inventory per item. They can see inventory of their all items at which location, how much quantity, how much quantity on current shipment and how much available. Lots of details. They can simply click there and download those details in Excel spreadsheet. They can use their Excel intelligence around it. You can even print custom documents from this particular portal. Now, if you are transportation, if you are into transportation business, you have tab called shipment and into this. You have different trips which are available for time slot planning or in time slot booking. We can see this warehouse transport trips here and you can assign these trips or transportation company themselves can plan some truck or lorry for assigning times assigning time slot uh, assigning for uh, truck or lorry for particular booking. 
even uh, as I mentioned earlier, like if your customer or the customer's transportation agency would like to book some time slot for performing some loading or unlo unloading activity, they can do that using app platform. So if I simply click on any of this particular booking, there, there will be a booking window will open on app platform and I can click on this particular function, let's say F1, and there I can see the particular booking along with all available time slots. I can select a specific time slot as a shipping agent and I would like to book that time slot. So I will click a request for processing time slot booking and then that will that will trigger a time slot booking request to my customer service person. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we can configure lots of workflows and using this uh, auto book time transportation company even can get automatically email as soon as the time slot is confirmed. Again, this particular app platform can be used not only for time slot booking, but even performing few warehousing activities using a graphical interface. So all the views what you have seen in RF scanner in Telnet node, Telnet mode, you can perform with, with simply app using this app platform tool. Lots of other activities can also be done there. For example, your, your driver, as soon as make the delivery of particular shipment, he would like to capture the proof of delivery as a, uh, as a digital signature on the document or on the app. He can capture that and that gets seamlessly synchronized with Business Central. Now, you have, that's quite good. Now you have made a time slot booking. The truckload will arrive at gate and you have lots of gate and he wants to know at which particular gate or dock he needs to come and load and unload that consignment. That is possible with our one more solution called yard management planning. So if I go to the roll center, you have another solution here called yard planning. And if I simply go there, you will see here I can assign the specific gate to specific truck for the specific trip. It is also possible this solution to combine with your gate access system, meaning assume a scenario that your particular customer's uh, shipping agent or lorry, lorry driver has came on some gate and on his app, he has this particular booking reference. He can simply scan that reference on the app on the gate and the gate will automatically open and driver will simply perform his activity of loading or unloading and that finishes process more seamless way. In warehousing, apart from receiving, there are lots of other activities like shipping or picking as I mentioned earlier. So that also you can configure using defining those different warehouse strategies for order picking, batch picking, case picking, etc. etc. This ends up more of logistics parts of the process. Of course, your finance team is quite keen on sharing on periodical basis the invoices to the customer. So uh, we have the posted sales invoices, a standard business central, but on top of it, we build our intelligence on it. For example, if I open some specific invoice, let's say the sneaker shop invoice. On top ribbon, you have a tab called process and. Sorry, you have tab called print and if I click on print, there are lots of reports get visible there. Now, what, what are th those reports all about? So one, of course, you can share the invoices to your customer via email and you can print those reports. But not only that, you can also show to the customer how the particular calculation has been performed for that particular invoice. So you can select those invoice reports and can simply print them or email them and that will tell complete information to the customer what is the calculation around that particular warehousing charges? So this is particularly the sales invoice layout which we can see on your screen and which specifies the details of cost along with the VAT and all the charges or activities that I'm billing, billing it to him. Now let's go back to the roll center page. So I'll close all the options which are open there and I'll simply go to the role center page. Here in the ribbon you have reports and analysis list which will give good overview in terms of all available data and MIS within Business Central. As I mentioned earlier, even you have quite a few interesting tiles. 
that also tells you lots of information around. Additionally, using a fantastic tool like Microsoft Power BI application and with our using our years of expertise in logistics domain. For key logistics KPI, we have developed quite a few fantastic dashboards. For example, look at this dashboard Boltrix WMS inventory. It gives the complete overview of stored inventory for different customers for different locations. There are quite other dashboards. Let's say Boltrix location capacity. Per available location within my building, what is available space is being shown there. Other dashboard like storage days. Quite useful that here I can see how much is average number of days that particular customers inventory is stored in. I can simply click on any of this particular small tile and the average number of days are available. How you can use them? Well, as an example, if you have fast moving customer and agreement set with him as like a fast moving activities. However, from Power BI dashboard, it appears to you that customer stored inventory for very long time with no activities perform on it. That means definitely you there is opportunity for you to tell customer to reconsider the pricing agreement because that's not something which is giving enough gross margin there. Good, quite useful. You have other dashboards like customer info, which gives information around number of receipts, number of invoices per month, per document, etc. Per, per document type, etc. And even you can use these dashboards on smartphone as well. That means on simply mobile app on Power BI, they can you users can view this information and that gives lots of MIS to them. There are a lot more things to show in WMS demo, but with the availability of time, I tried to cover the topics which are more relevant and useful for your day to day business. Of course, for any specific topic, we can plan a separate one on one session and we can take it forward. Thank you for patient listening. Thank you for demonstrating what 3PL Dynamics is capable of, particularly when it comes to warehouse management. Briefly summarized, what you just saw during this webinar is how you can prevent traffic jams for your docs with the app platform, but also how you can follow orders during the entire process and optimize the movements in your warehouse. In addition, Shailesh demonstrated how you can optimize the customer experience with smart automated steps and with the help of Power BI, easily gain insight into the earnings per customer. If you'd like to learn more about that, then we can do specific webinars on those areas in future along with specific webinars on transport management and freight management, like Shailesh mentioned. And now Jan Cornell and the rest of my curious team are available for questions. So please, if you have any questions, post them in the Q&A section and we can answer them now. Yeah, so there, there are a few questions, Scott. Uh, we can see here like uh, one question which is asked by someone saying what happens when a shipment contains less products or boxes than it should have, which for example appears during RF scanning, is this automatically registered in the system or does the system produce notification about this? So I think we have taken, uh, taken that briefly in, in current demo, but uh, this information, just to answer that, this information is indeed capture within the system because you have an order amount. For example, 120 we seen earlier in, in example uh, or we seen 150 in our example and out of that we registered only 120. There is already a setting at customer or even customer article level so you can indicate whether you are allowed to register less or more good boxes or goods or boxes there. Of course, we if we were not allowed to, we would have receive a notification Further, you can easily add an extra tile on your home screen to show all the lines that contain less or more findings therein. Or you can create a workflow to forward this to a specific status and this to a specific tile again like. So that was about that. Uh, that was on this uh, spot. Darshan, I think uh, the second question around is uh, 
during the process of inbound it was possible to register time spent how does the system capture this and this already available yan or darshan you would like to try check this yes yes of course uh, no problem um, absolutely it uh, in the back background we have a time register and um, uh, registrants entry uh, and uh, within the workflow of uh, a barcode scanning process we can automatically start uh, register a timestamp and that is the starting time of that uh, action and then uh, when the user the warehouse employee finish that activity in the background automatically the uh, another timestamp is uh, created uh, which is the end of that activity and then the system automatically uh, calculates uh, the time between start and end uh, and as uh, Shailas uh, mentioned during uh, the demo uh, is that then you can for instance uh, configure a service uh, based on the labor uh, the time uh, you you work on that specific activity that we automatically invoice that uh, based on a certain price which is in the price agreement uh, and invoice that to the customer. Thanks, Ian. Uh, th there is another question asked by Alex uh, saying for label code shown at the customer cart, can this also be used when working with QR code and can deviation to be set up per customer article? Of course, yes, Alex, you can set this up per customer, but also per customer article. Use of QR code is currently not being used by uh, is not being used by one of our customers, but certainly it is an option. I mean, definitely yes. Good one. I think Scott, another question. I, I guess someone has uh, pushed is where can I get more demos, videos, or other modules and other features? So, uh, Yan, any uh, any specific uh, thoughts? Yes. There? Yes, of course, uh, you can find them uh, uh, on, on, on the website. Uh, so on Mercurius website, there is a lot of information, but you can also find this information on the Voltrix uh, website. Um, so there we also have a lot of um, uh, information available with recorded webinars uh, in the past, uh, specific how-tos about uh, features, for instance, how to register package registration, that kind of things. Uh, there's a lot of information available on both of our websites. Yeah, yeah and someone asked, is it available as a SaaS? Yes, it's also, uh, it, it's actually available in three configurations, uh, on-prem, EAS and SaaS. Uh, and of course, SaaS uh, also by Microsoft um, is uh, released in different countries uh, on different times. Uh, we have to uh, look to, or there are also a different um, uh, releases uh, from our solution in different countries. But yes, in, in, in these three uh, configurations, our solution is available. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much uh, for insights. Uh, Scott, do, do we have sufficient time to take more questions? I mean, there are a few more questions I can see in chat window. Yeah, we have some more time. Yep. So someone also asked. Uh, so documents, Sachin has asked the question, document statuses, can those be easily configured as per business process requirement? It can, isn't it, uh, uh, Jan, like uh, yeah. using the status templates? Yes, uh, absolutely, because uh, I think that is one of the most important things uh, why we were able to both have a standard solution and there's an advantage of that, uh, being able to automatically upgrade the solution to new versions and promise always up to date. Uh, but at the same time, make it a very flexible solution. And these document status templates can be configured by our customer self and relate to uh, their processes. Uh, and you can split it up in different order types. 
uh, and link statuses to order types. But these order types can also be linked to specific customers. So you can configure that by yourself uh, and uh, create uh, as much document status templates as you want. Perfect. Thanks, Scott. Uh, Darshan, there is one question. What happens when a shipment contains less products or boxes than it should have, which, for example, appears during RF scanning? Is this automatically registered in the system or does this system produce a notification about this? Uh, well, there is a configuration available in the customer master as well as in customer item. So we can uh, define some business rules around it so that uh, whether to accept the partial or full shipments. So those business rules can be configured so that uh, at the when the warehouse employee he processes the shipment and if there is any partial so here uh, system can restrict him and such uh, uh, such a partial shipment which is uh, uh, which is restricted by system uh, the office user uh, customer uh, customer care uh, user he can see on his dashboard and he can then take necessary action uh, on that so this is how the uh, process and workflows can be implemented uh, within the system. Thank you, Darshan. Someone asked for label codes shown at the customer cart. Can this also be used when working with QR code and can deviation to be set up per customer article? So yes, I believe you can set this up per customer, but also Per customer article. Uh, of course, QR code is currently not being used. I, I think I answered that question already. Can you please explain overall buying pricing estimation process, uh, Jan? Or another question by some user. Yeah, the, um, that is uh, to understand that I, I'm not completely sure uh, what. Uh, what is mean by this? So, so the thing is that uh, what uh, if it uh, if it goes about uh, uh, the functionality in the system um, within the system, you can, as as Shirley uh, showed, uh, set up uh, contract uh, contracts per customer, but also per vendor. So, if you outsource uh, activities to other parties. You can uh, cover that price agreements as well. Um, and then indeed, um, based on cost prices and sales prices, and uh, you can have uh, a, a insight uh, directly on your inbound or outbound or trend for document about the revenue, the cost and the margin uh, upfront when you key in uh, or when you create uh, a inbound, outbound, or transport order, uh, but also during the process, you can uh, do a revised uh, estimation. Or when uh, all activities are finished, uh, you can do a after calculation uh, and then have insights about how revenue, cost, uh, and margins are, are evaluated during the process. Hopefully, that is an answer to this question. Thanks, thanks, Jan. Quite, uh, quite a detail. Uh, uh, Darshan, one more question. I think, can you manage goods at multiple physical locations? Yes, you can do that. Uh, in fact, you can define multiple buildings, and uh, for a certain types of goods, you can specifically uh, define certain uh, locations uh, within the system so that. Uh, system will always uh, redirect the warehouse activity to that location for those kind of goods. For example, certain hazardous or dangerous goods. And uh, if a warehouse user, uh, if he wants to overcome uh, those uh, system suggested uh, warehouse activity, uh, warehouse activity location, then system will restrict him and it will not allow him to change the location. So those kind of business rules we can define and in that way we can uh, manage uh, the goods at multiple locations. 
Thank you, Darshan. Quite quite a brief detailed one. Like uh, last question was we have. Can you set up set up and change the notifications? So I think again, yes, this is a uh, one of option that system offers are complete flexible configurable solution. For example, when the stock uh, let's say run below specific amount as I shown in cycle count, you can retrieve not only cycle count but automatic notification via system. Same also applies uh, if you if you're talking about some like KPIs or SLAs, you can simply set up this notification in order to meet the requirements and agreements you have made with your management or customers like. So yeah, Scott, I think that's the uh, that's the question bank we have currently so far. Thank you. Great, thank you very much Shailesh and of course Darshan and Jan Cornell for your time. And thank you everyone for attending the webinar. If you have further questions, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch through any of the email addresses or contact numbers on the screen in front of you. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.